everyone, and welcome back to episode two of the Chattercast. Today we have both Gumi and Kia with us, so hello. Hello! Hello! So, hi! How are you guys both doing? <laughs> hi! <laughs> um, I'm, I'm okay. My first test is okay. You've also been singing a lot lately, and it's kind of been giving me a headache a little bit. Just spending it's... a little bit too much time in the happy place on Showdown. I, I hear your voice there by a guy who stole your name. Uh, well, technically, um, we don't really know whose name originated first, but that's the story, and I'm sticking to it. Oh, not bad. Well, speaking of users who haven't been on Showdown in over a month, DMT, uh, you may know him as Smogon DMT, the amazing popular YouTube uploader, has just straight disappeared. He gave no prior warning to where he was going, so it's very unlikely that it's a vacation, could potentially be internet problems, but uh, if we're generally all worried about where he is and his well-being. Do you guys have anything to add to this that? Is a very serious, this is a very serious concern. I mean, I, I need to man, know where DMT is. The Please. man was frankly my idol. I looked up to him, and I just have, I mean, just where did he go? Why, I, why was I not notified? I just want some answers, to be completely honest. Like, on an all-serious note, I just kind of want to know where he is. Like, is he okay? That's the hardest part about this kind of thing happening over the internet, because if it was IRL, you'd be able to talk to them be like, hey man, you're like talk to their parents or you know what I mean, talk to a friend of a friend who'd know, but over the internet you have no idea. Like, he could be dead, he could be alive, he could just, I don't know, it's very weird. Alright, Scald is uh, being tested in UU, potentially, by, um, uh... That's, that's not confirmed, to be honest. <laughs> to be completely honest, it was brought up in IRC, I believe, is what happened, and uh, it just kind of exploded from there due to the absolute ridiculousness of what it is like scald if anything i believe you told me this steven that scald should have been t uh tested if at all last gen when it was actually rain boosted and ridiculous and uh for someone to bring it up this gen i know you have some pretty strong opinions on this it's not broken <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just a good move like it'd be like banning brave bird because it's good i mean that's you they're yeah, some moves are just going to be better than others. Like, Scald is better than Surf. I, I mean, mean, okay. When, when reading through the uh, the post that he brought up, you can't really refute the points he made, but I feel like it, it's just more of the Nazi kind of banning proposal that UU has been known for this entire generation, where it's a really good move. Most water types have an alternative in Surf or Hydro Pump or whatever. They wouldn't really be nerfing them. It just makes it more fair to switch in because if something gets burned, it's basically crippled for the rest of the game. And Well, yeah, and the point that Badass brought up, um, and Badass is the user in question we're talking about that was originally um, bringing this up, um, is that it's given to a lot of water types, and water is a great defensive typing as is, and when you throw it a move that's essentially, well, I don't want to say luck-based because it is a 30% chance, um, but a move that can hinder physical attackers to a type that's as widely distributed as water. I mean, most Pokemon are water types that are normal. So yeah, I, I think it's kind of yeah. I think water is actually the most common type of all Pokemon. So I mean, I I would think so. Let me let me let me Google to confirm. I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. I mean, just look at Hoenn. They had like five billion acres of water. Five billion. Yeah, that's something I actually uh, I'm really looking forward to. Yeah, water is the most common type with yeah. normal following. We, we can confirm we're qualified to talk about that. Um, <laughs> I, that's something I actually really kind of look forward to in the uh, new Hoenn remakes is how they handle all the water. Like I'm kind of looking forward to like 70% plus of the region being made up of water as long as they do like a decent surf theme. Yeah, it was... That was actually my favorite region, just in terms of, like, the actual region and all of that. I mean, it was just, I thought it was a really beautiful-looking region, and I think I might be partial to that because they made such a big leap from uh, yeah. Gen 2 to Gen 3 mm -hmm. in terms of graphics and stuff. Gen 3 was the first game I got. I started with Fire Red and uh, got Sapphire for my 10th birthday, and Gen 3... <coughs> After going back and looking at Gen 2, I've played them a bunch, but man, the graphic, the graphical increase between the two generations is just mind-boggling. Yeah. Yeah, and I just, I think the story mode made a huge leap, too. I mean, Gen 3 was just so innovative. Like, when I first got Pokemon Ruby version, I think I was probably 10 or something at the time. I was on vacation, and I wanted to go buy it at the store, and I don't even remember what happened on the rest of my vacation, because I was spent, like, playing Pokemon Ruby for so long. Yeah, and, and I think, yeah, sorry, go ahead, Kia. 
Ahsoka. And something else that's really cool is just they added a ton of new mechanics, like I was saying. They added the dive mechanic. I mean, you're on the ocean floor half of the time. And I, don't, they, I really feel like they made you figure out a lot of ways to get through the game that uh, may not have been, well, maybe more spelled out now in present games. Yeah, I think uh, the reason I really liked those games in particular is, one, having to dive to get into Sutopolis City for the first time was one of the coolest ideas I've seen, because, mm-hmm. like, imagine if there was a city like that in real life where you had to, like, you could only yes. get into it via submarine. You know, like, <laughs> or airplane, be, or helicopter. Yeah, like, yeah. that'd be really cool. And um, I'm sure there is somewhere like that in the world, but, you know, <laughs> somewhere in America. But, <laughs> <laughs> but like, um, also, I think those games were so good because it was the first time that they basically restarted. I mean, the mm-hmm. original, like, red, blue, and yeah. green were so magical because, you know, everything was new and all that. And in Gen 3, they did it again because they came up with a whole new cast of Pokemon. And, like, I know in the newer games they've tried to do similar things to that, but, uh, I don't know, it's kind of hard to recreate that magic. I think Gen 6 was about as close as they can probably get with a, a technological leap and a restart of the series. Adding on to what Keo said earlier about Gen 3 adding a bunch of stuff, from a competitive standpoint, it added a shit ton of stuff, too, because it's oh, the first time... Abilities in general, yeah, yeah, abilities in general. And you have EVs, they completely read the EV system, and that's why you can't transfer from Gen 2 to Gen 3. And uh, there's like a wall there, stuff. yeah. I did basically well, and the completely... IV system too, because Gen mm-hmm. Two was still running on the 16 IV system. Exactly. So there's kind of a wall between Gen Two and Gen Three that hasn't existed since, for that reason that they basically rewrote the entire game. And I mean, the system they've worked with is stuck so far. It's worked very well for competitive and in game, I'd say. And yeah. double battles. It... <laughs> and battles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't forget about double battles. Like, but, I mean, I the, mean... The, the double battle gym leader, like, that was the coolest thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, that, that's something that I really wish they'd done with Black and White is uh, made one of the gym leaders triple. A triple rotation. battle? Yeah, the first gym leader could have easily like, been just a triple having, battle. Just ha- like, and the thing is, they didn't really commit to it like they did in the Hoenn region. Like, there's a ton of double battles throughout the region. In Black and White and X and Y, like, I mean, there's there like maybe yeah. six triple rotation battles. There's, like, little spots where you can specifically battle a triple battle, but there aren't, like, yeah. three trainers standing out on a road together where when you walk by them, they all challenge you. Yeah, and I feel like... Uh... One of the things about Gen 3 was it seemed like that was a time when, you know, basically the kids who had grown up with, like, red and blue and whatever were starting to get a little older, and some of them had stopped playing the game. So they kind of needed to, you know, take chances to try to get a new generation involved in the game. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to try and find a new fan base. You want to try and build on the one you have. Exactly. Right. So, like, you know, they they took a lot of chances with that game, and I don't know if they haven't taken that many chances since, you know. And, yeah, exactly with the sticking with your same fan base. That's basically what they've been doing now. They've been making the games, like, even the mascots in the games have been getting older and older, trying to appeal to the same audience. Yeah, and they're marketing the game towards, like, 20-year-olds now, too, just as far as from a competitive standpoint. I mean, shoot, the Masters region for their official tournaments is the biggest category there is. I mean, it's clear that there's a lot more, probably 15-year-old pluses, that play this game than there are, like, 12 and unders. Exactly. Not many kids are picking it up. That's something I realize at school nowadays, is that Pokemon's relegated to, like, first and second grade, as opposed to when I was in school, fifth and sixth, fifth and sixth grade. And mm-hmm. it's just kind of been like slipping down. I don't know. A little bit upsetting. Um, speaking, I don't know how we got on the topic of Hoenn and third gen remakes, but um, speaking of other suspects, we have Gengarite suspect in Ubers, the first suspect ever in Ubers, which is Ubers is technically a band oh, no, 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 no. itself. First, first, I, first item suspect. First item suspect. Sorry. I mean, technically Gengar, Gen- Mega Gengar is a form of Gengar achieved through an item, but potato, potato. Yeah, true, true, true. Um, but yeah, this is the first suspect that Ubers has ever done, I think. No, they did Evasion Clause. Well, and, uh, yeah. technically, those are just kind of global bans. I mean, this is the first suspect very specific to Ubers that Ubers has put on by themselves, I think. I mean, if you're referring to a specific Pokemon. Yeah, you know. or an item, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I haven't really played too much Ubers this gen. I played it a lot last gen because Same. I liked I liked playing Sand in Ubers because I thought it was fun and different. Uh, but I haven't played too much this generation, mostly because of Mega Gengar plus Cernius cores. Um, it's just not really fun to 
team build for that tier because you basically have to have you know two to three Pokemon that can come in or that aren't trapped by Gengar if you want to have a chance of winning exactly. and you need you know one to one counter and probably two checks to Xerneas if you want to have and a good chance. I can say from playing a lot of games with really poorly built teams that it's really not fun to be um, playing on the defense of the entire battle saying, well, I can't leave this in because then I get set up on by this or I'm going to get trapped. It's it's just not a fun way to play the game. And how are, you supposed to, how are you supposed to win with Stall when a Gengar can beat a Chansey one-on-one? Yeah, it's about Taunt plus Destiny Bond on a uh, Shadow Tag Mon is just <laughs> retarded, especially with, what, 130 base speed? Yeah, it's Not really to fast. mention Parish Song and Hypnosis and all that shit. Like, I feel like um, Nintendo has officially made one of the most broken Pokemon of all time. Like, more broken than Xerneas or Mega uh, Kangaskhan. Or... It, it's just ridiculous how constricting it is to team building, which is exactly oh, why they're suspecting it. it just oh, and the thing fun. is, the thing is, is, like, all you need to beat Chansey with it is Taunt. Because, you know, normally they're mono-attacking with mm-hmm. Seismic Toss. Yep. So, like, basically you put Taunt, because you want to beat Chansey, and then you put three moves, um, depending on what Mons you want to beat. You know, like, oh, my team really struggles with, you know, breaking down, uh, you know, what's a good wall? Like, I don't Gear, know. Giratina? I, no, you don't. <laughs> you're not going to trap a Giratina. That's a ghost type. I mean, I guess but, you like, could beat it with your stab anyway, so that's a terrible example. Lugia? Yeah. I don't yeah, I don't play Ubers very often, so you're I can't like, name oh, like, you know, I suck against facing Lugia, let me taunt it and then kill it with Shadow Ball repetitively or you know, something like that. It's just it's annoying. You get to choose what you want to kill. Much like an OU, you'd be like, Oh, I'm running HP Ice because I want to kill Lando and I'm exactly. running Thunderbolt I... because I want to kill Skarm. I feel like Shadow Tag as an ability is somewhere between completely uncompetitive and broken and just a good part of the metagame and Mm-hmm. It's always been on a shaky start. I mean, Gen 4 basically banned the entire ability altogether. Well, yeah, and then the reason it was so good in Gen 4 was because there was no team preview, too. You could That's really fair. abuse it. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you could wait, you could bait something in, sack them on, and then destroy the one counter to the biggest threat on your team. It was just the, the unpredictability and the not knowing, I think. That was yeah, kind of like, in Gen 4, you had to assume every opposing team had a Doug Trio and a Magnazone. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, I guess that's another boon for Team Preview. Team Preview really did change the game. So I guess Gen 5 kind of threw some roadblocks, just like Gen 3. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason Shadow Tech wasn't that quote-unquote good in Gen 5 is because the Mons that had it at the time weren't that good. Gothitelle isn't very good. Wava Fed is... It was better last gen than it is this gen. It it did what it needs to do, but it doesn't do it very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas Mega Gengar can basically kill anything at once because not only is it, I mean, it's just it's so fast and it really actually has a decent special attack stat. Yeah, I mean, it's the same as a Life Orb Gengar, just without a Life Orb, which is still really strong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. and you know, getting to pick and choose what you want to kill is, you know, it it makes stall unplayable basically. Speaking of making Stall unplayable, unless you want to run uh, Dragon Tail um, Dragulge, Combuskin is finally being suspected in NU, where this chicken has just <laughs> kind of terrorized. It's been it's been around for the entire generation, but uh, there have been a couple things that have popularized it as of late, and uh, Combuskin's being seen all over NUPL and in tournaments in the NU room, and uh, finally like it's being suspected. on the ladder. Yeah, basically. It's... All right, so I'd like to comment on this since I don't know if it was me, but I'm gonna take credit for it. That <laughs> I, I was I was kind of the one who popularized this playstyle because I played with it and got into like top ten, and then I uh, gave this team I had to I play tennis, and he got to number one with it, and that's kind of when it started to take off. Was when we were both in top ten at the same time with you know Chicken Pass or whatever the hell you want to call it. Yeah. And like Chicken Pass. I, I mean like the thing the thing is is like. Combuskin is such a good mon in this tier, um, not because of the fact that it gets SD and Baton Pass with Speed Boost, or even Bulk Up, bulk up uh, yeah. which is the better set, but um, because 
Its typing actually is really, really good for this tier. It gives it a lot of setup opportunities because... And the added bulk that you can get with a Violite and not have to run speed, too. Is exactly. The thing is, is when you have a Pokemon that can set up on Mons like Seismitoad and Feraligator, like, generally this, you don't want to live to in... Them. Yeah, like, generally you don't want to leave it in on, like... You can protect to be faster than for alligator, bulk up, and it does like 40% to you with a waterfall. That's when you know things are getting a little bit unhealthy, and yeah. Yeah, and I, mean, I mean, this is this isn't a tier where a lot of setup moves aren't really too common. I mean, you see things like SD Shiftry, um, but there's not a lot of real fast setup mons that are so exactly. devastating to a meta where you see things like Roar Rhydon and Dragon Tail Dragalgy that are really common. It, it was a huge shock to the meta game, I think. For for such a weak, not weak, but um. Relatively unstrong. <laughs> like it's not as strong of a meta as other ones, and to be taken by something as strong as Combuskin Pass is really centralizing the tier. As you need some very specific counters to beat it, and when you bring said counters and you don't face Combuskin Pass, you're at a huge disadvantage. Uh, we haven't actually described well, what it well, is. Do you want to go into a little yeah. bit of detail? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go into it. Um, so basically. I wanted to make a team, and I saw Combuskin, and then I saw basically a lot of potential because, like I said earlier, its typing is really good for this tier. Um, basically, the best Pokemon in this tier is Shiftry, probably, and uh, Combuskin resists both of its dual stabs. Um, Spiritomb is a very good Pokemon in this tier, Pawnier. and Pawnier's also a Pawnier's also a really good Mon. Um, and basically its bulk is so good, I mean, you can even set up on some of the weaker offensive Pokemon in the tier, like Scarf Primeape. Um, you can protect, and then bulk up, and then you outspeed, and you get up a second bulk up. And basically at that point, it's over. Yeah. Um, you can live stuff like <laughs> Max Attack Golem's Earthquake and set up bulk ups on that as well. It's really good. And, gross. uh, so basically, uh, the original team I created, and based off what I've seen in terms of... Um, ladder teams and NUPL teams, the same structure is basically held. It's it's Combuskin plus Stored Power Zatu plus Gator Kanga, and then the last it's basically filler of one Mon that you either choose if you want to stop Roar or if you want to stop like Dragon Tail. So I normally just put Slurpuff, and then uh, the last slot is some sort of Hazard Setter. Yeah, because rocks are always nice, and that's pretty much all you need to be successful with this playstyle is those yeah. four mons plus whatever the hell you want in the last two slots. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I've been running camera up, and it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, yeah. it, it really doesn't. <laughs> the, and, the, the, go ahead, Richard. Oh, sorry. The thing I was just going to say is it seems like every single tier, and this could be more of a subject for another time, but it seems like every tier where Baton Pass is a problem... <sighs> It, it's kind of baton pass. It's like I would say it's fifty percent baton pass, but it's fifty percent the recipient knowing or has the ability to know stored power, and stored power is just such a crazy move because it beats unaware Pokemon just simply on the fact that it is a five hundred base power move. The fact that you don't need a plus one special attack to break through. Like for instance, if Zatu was forced to run Psychic instead of stored power, it wouldn't be able to break through stuff like the barrel even if it was at like. I don't know, plus 3 attack, plus 3 defense, plus 3 speed, because it would still just be a psychic. It wouldn't be a 480 base power psychic with stab not even factored in yet. So, stored power, it just seems like such a crazy move, because, again, an OU, without uh, Sylveon or Espeon knowing it, it would have been a lot less threatening. Yeah, and I think the reason that uh, Combuskin works so well in this metagame is because it's really heavily geared towards either stall or uh Offense. Bulky offense, like exactly. bulky offense. Even so balance like, too, yeah. And, yeah, and I mean, in in OU, those are the playstyles that really struggled against BP in general, and uh, it it holds true in NU because unless you have like, you know, a, a a bunch of phasers, but you can stop that with Zatu. Exactly. And if you're and if you're forced to run Haze or something, um, once you once you reveal which of your Pokemon has Haze. Um, a good player can still win because you just have to weaken that mon, and then you can, exactly. you know. So it's people who struggle using this playstyle generally just try to set up and win immediately. But it's more of like a late game option of yeah. like, you know, their team is you know relatively weakened. Let me go and set up with my Combuskin and pass to, 
you know, Kangaskhan and just sweep through the rest of their team. The thing, you know? the thing a lot of people forget about is Zatu does have magic bounce and roar and whirlwind and taunt and stuff like that. The same thing, the same points that were brought up when it was being suspected in OU, they just aren't an option. Like, if you bring in something that could even potentially or commonly carry roar, they're just going to baton pass out into... Zatu, and that's why even I've used it a lot in RU, and I chose to use Zatu over Sigilyph just simply because Magic Bounce is so good at bouncing back roars and taunts, and not to mention the fact that Combuskin, when whether it's running SD or bulk up, it, it's still really powerful. 206 base, um, like just that uh, attack off the bat with no investment. Even then, just at plus one or plus two, you're at like 300 attack, and Flare Blitz is gonna annihilate a bunch of. Stuff like Miss Maggie's, if you bring it in and try to taunt with it. So it's yeah, definitely not thing, a sitting duck. Yeah, and the thing I've seen is uh, is people can be like, oh, the metagame can adapt to Combuskin, um, which I think is kind of a dumb argument because if the Extremely metagame tries, argument. if people try to adapt to Combuskin, then Combuskin is just going to adapt. I mean, recently I've been on an alt and I've had a lot of success with. Uh, the main quote unquote counter to Combuskin Pass now is. Uh, Dragon Tail Dragalge. Mm -hmm. So I've just been running sub on my Combuskin over an attacking move, and mm -hmm. you you just eat up the Dragon Tail and continue to set up. Yeah, on the quote -unquote especially a pl especially at plus one or plus two defense, and if it's just very meta game defining right now, and it's not a good thing you want to define your meta game. So yeah, well, I mean, I think... I've, I've basically stopped playing in you. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, yeah I, I would can attest to that as well. <laughs> uh, but gonna say to you, uh, another reason it's so good is because. With the other five threats on your team, you're basically building a team with five threats in Combuskin, as Steven kind of touched on, is that you're kind of banking on your opponent to have something Combuskin can set up on, mm -hmm. but at the same time, if they don't have something Combuskin can set up on, usually the other five members of your team are going to break through them anyways. It's You're relying on your opponent to have good mons in the tier, such as Shift, Revile, Plume, Seismato that we've been listing. Yeah. So... The fact that the metagame was so centralized before with teams having things like Probopass, Vioplume, Hariyama, standard defensive cores like that, and they're so revolved around balance and bulky offense, really just makes Combuskin excel due to the fact that it can set up speed, attack, defense, all of that in one. You're not trying to necessarily overwhelm the opponent. You're just trying to weaken them to the point that you can pass. And a team preview... All you're really looking for is what mon do I set up on? Exactly. And, and nine I mean, times out of ten, your opponent has one. And the thing is, is like, it just, it sets up on so many top mons, like, you know, mm -hmm. I guess Shiftry is the best example, in my opinion, because Shiftry is, you know, one of the best Pokemon that's here, and I had an example in a battle the other day where, um, the, I led Samurott, and the opponent led with Shiftry, and I just sacked my Samurott to get a free switch into Combuskin, and just won. That was all I needed. I sacked... I sacked a Pokemon turn one so I could just win the game, and uh, that's that's gross. <laughs> I mean, that's just <laughs> that's, that's the best. Thing that's, it's, it's pretty unhealthy. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's just I I don't know how you're supposed to how you're supposed to win and um, when you can't use the best Pokemon in the tier. I guess yeah. you could argue that you know they're no longer the best Pokemon in the tier because Combuskin is around, but. I mean, you're still going to set up on stuff. I mean, the entire game is just trying to double switch into Combuskin on like a Cryogonal exactly. or a you're, Spirit. The, the whole game is kind of akin to Mega Gengar. You're worried about leaving certain Pokemon in just because of the threat of an instant game over. So, I mean, and the thing is, is that it's bulky enough and it's a good enough playstyle that sometimes all you need is one bulk up. And like the the thing is, is you can come in on like a Shiftry and set up a bulk up as they switch. And that next turn, if they bring in something that can actually threaten you, like um, you just you just BP and just say Kangaskhan, and you you know punch holes. And later in the game, you can BP into Gator, and all of the threats that yeah. you know your physical walls have been weakened by the first run through with Kangaskhan. And that's another that thing that just win. Combuskin's reusable as opposed to Gorbis, who uses the White Herb the first time. It's It's got such great longevity, because, I mean, even if you knock off the Aviolate, the thing is still so bulky. Exactly. Especially after a couple bulk-ups. Mm -hmm. Alright, so, speaking of amazing Pokemon and amazing players, the uh, official tournaments lately have been going on, and the World Cup of Pokemon just recently ended with Brazil beating the Eastern U.S. 
Uh, I know I know nothing about this, but Keo and Gumi have some opinions on it, so go ahead. It's very sad. I think for uh, a lot of people, they were expecting U.S. East to go ahead and win it from the beginning. Um, I think um, I think if you ask 80% of the smoke on community, they would probably say that. And I don't necessarily think it was an upset for Brazil to win, but I think a lot of people just uh, really underestimated them in in comparison to the U.S. East squad. They had a very good team, uh, played very well throughout the previous rounds, and uh, I mean, Brazil fought hard. They played well. That's really all I can say. Yeah, I mean, the... Uh... I actually really have been watching a lot of World Cup, and I've really enjoyed watching uh, these good players. And um, I think it's interesting. Uh, one of the things that uh, you guys should consider doing is going back and watching all of the replays of just one player. Um, because I had never really heard of Soja King before the battle last night, and so I knew that was going to happen last night. So yesterday I went through and watched, you know, all of his battles, and uh, you know, it's just interesting to see, you know, how they play and why they're why they're good, you know, mm -hmm. why they're able to play at such a high level, and uh, how risky they are, how often they scout in the beginning of the battles. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's um. You know, everyone has their own unique play style. Um, but, you know, in Soja King's example, uh, in Gen 5 OU, he really liked Rainstall. You know, he was he was just a really good Rainstall player. And he actually brought the same team from the semis to the finals, which is pretty bold, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, it's just... I, the best way to get better at something is to, you know, watch people who are good at it. To learn from someone who's good, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's just, you know, World Cup is always a, a good time of year for Pokemon because I feel like a lot of people watch it, and it just makes the entire community, one, come together to watch, you know, this one tournament. And also mm -hmm. it, it helps everyone to improve, which is really nice because um, I just like seeing people be good at the game. I, I like playing good players. I'd agree with that statement. It's much better than playing somebody using a shelmet. Yeah, just in general, especially uh, games against Stall, I can contest that when you actually win against Stall, it's such a triumph, especially in Gen 5 when Rain Stall is just so dominant. Um, yeah. A, a, a well-played game where you beat Stall is always a lot more fulfilling of an achievement than a hyper-offense duke out. And this is something that I, uh, I don't really get to say a lot, but the competitive meta game is really shown in tournament battles like these. You know, you don't really get to see a ton of people using stall on the ladder because a lot of people are like, "Well, hey, you know, I just kind of want to ladder get my points. I'm going to run a hyper offense team." And you don't necessarily get to see threats that are overpowered because, for 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 instance, let's say the end of Black White Two, um, where during the Landorus suspect, you could say that Landorus was broken and that's why it got banned. But honestly, it wasn't on that many teams. Like people higher up on the ladder. And people in general weren't using it so much because they were like, okay, we get it, it's a good Pokemon, we're going to move on and try and find other stuff. And it's really not, the latter really doesn't show the true meta. And I think something about tournaments is really cool that they do show that. They show a lot of different play styles, they show a lot of threats that are really good that you just don't see as often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, um, on, this is a topic that's probably touchy and it's going to come across as complainy, but... Y'all need to stop bitching about stall. If someone brings stall to a tourney match, I mean, it's a legitimate play style. You know, yeah. because they're it. trying to win. You know, they think it's the best play style that's going to give them the best I mean, outcome. Stall is just as viable as hyper offense, and it's just as good of a strategy. It's just the fact that it takes more time. You should embrace the fact that you get to play Pokemon for longer. If you don't enjoy playing <laughs> Pokemon, why are you playing in the first place? If you just want to enjoy ten minute games. Go play 1v1. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, and, and the thing is, is, um, I mean, Stall is, I actually like playing Stall, which is funny, because, I mean, like Keo said, on ladder, do I bring Stall? Uh, not really, because, you know, it, it does take a longer time, and, you know, it's normally when I play, I just want to get, like, you know, a quick 10 minute match in. But, you know, there have been tournaments before I've brought Stall, and it's, you know, it's, just part of the metagame, and it's something that you have to 
account for when you're building your team, uh, especially if you're not running your own. If you're running, you know, stall of your own, how do I beat other stall teams, you know? Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, Smoke on Official Tournaments, the Frontier uh, just started sign-ups, and Grand Slam is now underway. Once again, I know very little about this. Keo, want to touch on a bit? I know you're more into the tournaments than I am. Keo's dead. Well, Billy. Yeah. Yeah. Go. Oh, wow, my mic was muted. I was speaking and everything. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> and there it is. Uh, so if you don't know what the Smoke on Frontier is, basically this is the 8th annual uh, tournament. And it's basically... And it's awesome. <laughs> and it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's basically some of the most respected players in the community, some of the best players for their respective tiers. Um, they're, they're basically asked to become um, a... a a brain, basically, just kind of like the uh, Battle Frontier in Emerald. I don't know what game it actually originated, uh, uh, but they give them the titles league. like Arena Tycoon, Factory Head, etc. And um, for instance, I'm just going to read off some of the players that have already been revealed to be brains. There's Philip Seven O Eight Six, Ojama, FLCL, CBB, BKC. I mean, there are the names you've probably heard before. They're very good battlers, and there's actually 16 brains this year, and um, they've actually changed the format a little bit too. But basically, the goal is to beat. Um, everybody in the frontier, barring like one player usually, and the tournament basically runs um, until somebody does that. Now, there's been a lot of years where it just didn't happen, but I believe in the past three or so, somebody has actually won. Uh, so it's kind of cool. It's a huge challenge for pretty much everybody on Smogon. It's open to the brains themselves. It's open to top tournament players, newer players, people who just made Smogon accounts. So it's really cool, and um, I think it's really great this year that they're allowing different tiers too. There's three advanced brains, three diamond and pearl brains, uh, three black and white brains, and a whopping seven XYOU brains. So it's really cool for uh, players to get to learn the older metas too if they haven't necessarily played them. Uh, yeah. But that's going on right now if you feel like signing up. Yeah, I think what's cool about this tournament is um, it gives it gives players who you know maybe are less experienced or newer to the metagame an opportunity to play the best players um you know on ladder and stuff you know who you play is dependent on your rank and um mm -hmm. this kind of gives you an opportunity to you know play some of these top players you know i've had you know the pleasure of playing you know maybe three or four of them and it's really cool just getting to play people that you know are really really good at the game um Definitely. So it's just, you know, it kind of gives everyone that same opportunity. Everyone starts on the same playing field. It doesn't matter who you are, and that's kind of why I like it. <laughs> that sounds really cool. I might actually sign up. That sounds kind of fun. And, uh, and after then, Grand Slam? Yeah, the other tournament Richard mentioned is, I believe, I think this is the third year that Grand Slam's been going on. Uh, what Grand Slam is, it's an official tournament that focuses on the lower tiers. Pretty much every official tournament you hear about on Smogon, it's OU. I mean, SPL kind of gets into other tiers. World Cup of Pokemon's all OU. Uh, the Frontier is all OU. Uh, what the Grand Slam does is it holds an individual open for each tier, if you don't know what it is. So, for instance, the UU Open is being held right now. We're in round one to that. Um, on the fourth, the LC Open's going to start, then the RU Open. Then a new Open this year is going to be the Doubles Open, the NU Open, and the Ubers Open. So every tier but OU kind of gets its chance to shine. You get to see some players who traditionally play only lower tiers and not so much OU get to shine a little bit. And you earn points based on how well you finish in each of the respective Opens. And each of these Opens is handled like an official Smogon tournament, so it's a huge entry pool. The tournament goes on for weeks. And uh, at the end, I believe they take, I think it's top 16 or top 8 players, and they put them into a playoff format. So it's kind of uh, the way tournaments are run on Smogon, and it's just really cool to see all the lower tiers get some action uh, for once. Typically they don't. Again, typically OU is just the standard meta, and that's all uh, competitive players tend to care about. So it's really cool to see those get action. Yeah, and Grand Slam is just... its I think it's fun. I mean, just like you said, getting to play lower tiers is interesting because... I mean, each metagame is so different. Um, you know, UU is vastly different from OU, which is vastly oh, different from from NU, which is vastly different than Ubers. And I think it, I think the point of this tournament is basically who is the best Pokemon player. You know, yeah, yeah not just the best and OU that, that's player. That's really cool too. Yeah, because you know, you can be, you can know nothing about a tier and be given a decent team and do well if you're a good player. You know, mm -hmm. so. And something else that's really cool, what I like about it is around, I don't know, a couple weeks before each open, I really start playing the tiers if I haven't done it in that gen. 
Like LC, I haven't played too much this gen. Ubers, I haven't played hardly at all. I think I've played two Ubers matches competitively. Uh, doubles, I haven't really gotten into. So I get to learn these metas too. I can link you a really good flowchart for how to play Little Cup, actually. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the link will be uh, down below in case anyone else Hey, that's my that's my link. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's hilarious. It's probably something about spike and stealth rock stack. Plus uh, no, think, no, 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 it's so good. <laughs> think, here, I'll, I'll I'll read I'll read the first right. couple lines here. Hold on. All right. Okay. <laughs> Do you have a chin chow? No. Why are you even playing Little Cup? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, nice. How are you playing your Chin Chow? I use Eevee Light. Okay, you have a brain. Do you have a Fletchling? Do you have a Fletchling? No. Wow, much hipster. Too bad your opponent is as good as you with a Fletchling. <laughs> yes, nice. You might win. So, yeah. LT is basically Chin Chow and Fletchling. Yeah, and and, and trapping the opposing Chin Chow with the And then lit. being able to win with Fletchling. <laughs> Another thing that's interesting is the LC Open for the next one to start on August 4th, and there's actually, they're actually going through a suspect, suspect test, yeah. Right yep. Yeah, so three things are going to be gone from the Little Cup tier um, pretty much right before the tournament starts. I'm not sure if it's going to take effect round one, but it'll be a little bit of a different meta, so yeah. it's kind of it, a... It's kind of weird how Little Cup does so. their uh, suspect as well. You just achieve mm -hmm. Rex on the ladder, and then you nominate three things that you think are suspect worthy. And mm -hmm. what's interesting... It can be items, abilities, Pokemon in general. Yeah. Yeah. What's interesting about Little Cup 2 is I actually the like Pokemon their suspects. Tiny. Yes, I like their suspect system uh, more than any other tiers um, because yeah, like you, really achieve, you achieve Rex and you vote for three things. And what's nice about that is uh, basically that you're not, limited, getting... you're not limited to like uh, I want to do I want to ban Aegis Slash or do I not want to ban Aegis Slash. You know, you, you get to choose, and that kind of brings together a community type feel. But what separates Little Cup to me is that you can also vote to unban something that was previously banned. Mm -hmm. And voting and looking at the voting for this suspect, uh, it's looking like Yanma is going to be unbanned, which is really interesting. And the way it works is you get you know your three votes, and your first vote is worth three points, your second vote is worth two points, and your third vote is worth one point. So it's you know just a simple point system and. Uh, yeah, I think it's the top three things that get the most points. It's really cool, too. People get to decide what they think is more urgent. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. The other thing I really like about this is it's not just the one topic, and there's a thread going on that people get to. Um, I don't. I feel like bandwagoning has been very prominent since uh, uh, suspect tests started getting opened again in black-white. I feel like people really uh, kind of hop on a good player's opinion and just kind of dick-ride them, to be completely honest with you. And I feel like it's really unhealthy for the tiering process, and I yeah. really like the way little... Things. I feel like yeah. the, the OU suspect process has been really shaky lately, and that actually sounds like a much better idea. Yeah, I mean, I like it because, like, since you get to write explicitly what you want to vote for, I mean, I've seen everything from, like, you know, I want to ban Pursuit on a Pokemon or something. So you can still keep it in the tier, but, you know, something that was making it unhealthy can be removed or, you know, chlorophyll plus... Uh, you know, Bulbasaur drought plus drought. Where Phil was Bulbasaur? Yes, Richard, mm -hmm. that's very dangerous. <laughs> but like, and man, Bulbas <laughs> I've never played Little Cup in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, uh, you basically get to do vote exactly what you want, and it seems. I mean, I may be completely wrong here. Uh, you can tell me if I'm wrong, guys. But in OU, once something is banned, I mean, unless they choose to retest it, it's pretty much gone forever. True and black. And um. Yeah, and I mean, like, you know, there are times where something gets banned, and then if something else gets banned, you're like, wow, this Pokemon is either really needed or wouldn't have been as broken if this Pokemon wasn't in the tier. Yeah, that's you kind know. of like the yeah, thing that End of Black and White uh, 2 had, where some people wanted to suspect Landorus before Keldeo, and some people wanted to suspect Keldeo before Landorus, because they figured it would uh, sway the votes, which whichever one went first. And as it yeah. turns out, the first one got banned and the second one didn't. Right, so if you had used this system, they might have both gotten banned during the same suspect Exactly. Yeah, it saves yeah, on so time it, and saves on the whole metagame, to be honest, because it can sway completely differently. Yeah, and it just comes down to uh, what does the metagame need versus do I, in, do I think this particular Pokemon is broken? Um, yeah. You know, I think m defining a metagame is more important than, um, you know, yeah. Looking individually at Pokemon. Well, basically. speaking of defining, 
uh, Google has recently bought Twitch for one billion dollars, and uh, they're as close to defining the internet as you can get. Uh, they they more or less have a monopoly on uh, the internet at this point. Would you agree? Um, I would agree that that was an interesting segue. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> speaking of <laughs> speaking of defining, yeah. hello? Uh, but <laughs> Google's basically used this to kind of show to everyone else that as soon as something, another website or another business comes up and uh, is starting to make headway um, at overtaking Google as being the top dog, they'll simply just throw money at them until they oblige. And you you can't argue with the fact that. As, as soon as you get, an, there's a breaking point where Google can just continuously throw you money, and at one point you'll fold, and then Google's continue to be top king. I mean, I I don't know if anyone will ever be able to top them at this point on the internet. Do you guys have any? All right, two things. One, um, companies can <laughs> fall. Blockbuster used to be the thing, and then uh, it uh, it died. And then so, I, I feel like the difference yeah, between so. Blockbuster and Google is that Google's the king of the biggest thing in the world right now. Google's the king of the internet, and I can't think of anything being bigger than the internet for at least my lifetime. Yeah. The other thing is, if Twitch gets Google Plus, I'm gonna be P for. Yeah, that tight. was that was the other point I was gonna bring up to Keo because I know you've yeah, some, showed showed interest in uh, yeah. you've showed interest in uh, starting up a serious Twitch. Uh, oh, definitely. Yeah, I'm probably gonna move over to Twitch full time and just kind of have YouTube beside. I think. It's uh, just, I was. I've honestly been considering community. it as well because it's just it's a better community. It allows you to be much more interactive with your viewers, and yeah. to be honest, it saves on editing, which you can, you can obviously still do YouTube on the side. So if you want to put together a huge project, you can still upload it to YouTube. But what it allows you to do is um, be more consistent with your content and uh, be more rewarding to your viewers, to be completely honest. And I feel like Twitch is, has a great model, and that's why Google bought them. Um, I yes. agree. I hope they don't get Google+. Plus. I I just really hope that they don't change too much. It's I a mean, good system. It People is. Love it's it a for really a good reason. system, I, I have to admit. Um, one thing that I will go and say is that um, Google confirmed... I, I guess I'm going to be able to find a link and uh, put it down in the description, but I'm pretty sure... Um, I guess it will be back in April that Google confirmed that they're dropping Google Plus support and they're not going to be forcing it on YouTube anymore. That'd be um, wonderful. So that'd, I I don't know. Nice. Yeah, I don't know if they're actually going to go through in Google Plus Google Plus with Twitch because if they're not going to bother with it for YouTube anymore and they've kind of dropped the whole idea and realized that they were wrong in how they were doing it. Um, well, yeah, I don't know why they would be able to do it. Problem. Yeah. I mean, if something's not broken, you don't try and fix it. Mm -hmm. like, Specs is a great mod. Don't go run an FD just to be hipster. Um, <laughs> the, thi like, the thing is, yeah, like Twitch has. There's a reason why Twitch was uh, very quickly approaching them and and uh, going to overtake them uh, because they had it all figured out and what they did what they needed to and they did it very well. So, I mean, there's not really a need to change what there is right now. I mean, you can obviously go in and add your own little personal flair to the website now that you own the uh, company, but um, there's obviously not need for much change. Yeah, basically. Um, yeah. And, I, I uh, would hope that there's probably not as uh, many server problems. I know there's been quite a... Uh, over the past couple of days, there's been a few server hiccups with Twitch every now and then. So I would hope that that stops now that they've got uh, Google's network in there. Yeah, with those it, servers. it's most likely Google switching over. That's another thing with the latency problem. Well, not latency problem, but... Uh, I mean, the 30-second delay is kind of... Uh, yeah. Uh, that's probably the least fortunate thing that people don't like about it. It, it makes it tough to communicate with your chat. Exactly. Because <laughs> you'll say something, and then 30 seconds later, the chat will respond to you. It just... It, yes. It kind of makes it <laughs> awkward at times. And I feel like with Google's money, uh, they'll be able to throw some money at the problem and at least bring down the latency. Probably not ever eliminate it, but... Uh, definitely oh, I don't think it. it's possible to ever fully eliminate it just through the fact that you've got one person broadcasting and to a server and getting redirected, but... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, for Twitch plays yep. Pokemon, it was a big ass problem. But... Oh yeah. <laughs> for back when Twitch plays Pokemon oh, was actually uh, <laughs> back when it was actually popular and bringing in hundreds of thousands of people instead um, of 1500 people. Oh no, I I actually che right I checked it the other day. There's like literally 500 <laughs> less than. But, oh god. Yeah, right yeah. now well, there's 15 when they were playing people, so. Yeah, 1500 are playing X and Y right now, but when it was on Emerald still, oh my, there was no hype for it at all. It was ridiculous. Yeah. It was good back in the day. 
What, yeah, what I want to know is how they're playing Pokemon X, having it be on the 3DS. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I think that what he did was he made like a machine that can actually like manually input onto an actual 3DS based off of uh, inputs. Yeah, either that or well, yeah, that would make sense. I mean, I'm sure. I mean, he's to... quite crafty in how he did. It's unfortunate that all the hype died down for what he did. But yeah. I, I do remember back when it first kicked up that there was a ton of lag in every chat on show or on uh, Twitch because they were all. Most of the server space was being taken up Spam, by... Spamming AB, AB, Exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Democracy, anarchy. <laughs> I think Democracy I, and anarchy, yeah. I actually thought that was kind of interesting. Like, do you think something like that will ever be done again? Or if it is done again, it'll ever be as popular as it was the first time? Like, do you see it working for sure, a different game? I'm sure it will. It, it probably won't be for a while, but, you know, I mean... Things resurface. I mean, yeah. acid wash jeans, for example. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, dude, freaking jean, jean shorts are never coming back. Shorts, man. yep, they're done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 never. <laughs> <laughs> they're a fashion no no. <laughs> I still remember cutoffs in elementary school. Oh, <laughs> oh. Your jeans are still perfectly good. Just cut them off. It'll be great for the summer. We'll buy you new yeah, stuff exactly. in the fall. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like. Uh, Twitch is cool, and, uh... Yeah. Uh, yeah, Twitch is just... I don't know, it's interesting, because it's kind of different than any other medium. Exactly, yeah. I've been I've been trying to explain to my parents lately the difference between Twitch and YouTube, and they just can't seem to grasp it. But I honestly feel like Twitch is just... I wouldn't say the superior product, because obviously there's always going to be um, a market for stupid people uploading videos from their phone wanting to show their friends, and obviously YouTube is the original video sharing site, but it just for trying to create content and get a fan base going, I almost feel like Twitch is more where it's at at this point. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, uh, and I think also what's interesting is like the console support for Twitch, mm-hmm. um, because like um, you know, I invested in an Xbox One, and what was nice is that I didn't have to do cool. anything else if I wanted to, you know, upload to Twitch. You know, I just, I had made that investment, and, you know, so one day I just started playing a game on Twitch, and I had, like, you know, 15 or 20 people watching, and it's like, that's kind of, you know, cool to think about. Mm-hmm. So shall we uh, transition into some questions? Sure. sure. All right, do you want to host them? I did the I did the podcast. You can host the questions. Uh, who's hosting? <laughs> <laughs> Whoever wants to pick. You, why don't you do it, Stephen? <laughs> totally right. right up your alley. Good, because I closed the document. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. So uh, the first question is: Hello, podcasters and possible guests. Period. Hello. My question for you is: What is your favorite playstyle and why? Example: Stall, Hyper Offense, Bulky Offense, etc. Okay, I think I, uh, back in Gen 5, when I first picked up competitive, I was definitely more of a stall player. I guess it was because I started off watching Leo, and he definitely enjoyed stall. I, I think that... I feel sorry for you. Yeah. <laughs> Leo was your first uploader. <laughs> well, okay, if you want to go back, it, MTG Xerxes was who taught me how to actually play competitive, and I think he was more of just a bulky offense player, but, um... That Cresselia, though. <laughs> I mean, he he was he was more of a Scarm Noir player, not a Scarm Bliss player. Um, or no, sorry, uh, a Noir Bliss player. But whatever. Uh, he he basically taught me the the fundamentals of always have a switch in. And I don't know if that's more stall or whether it's just bulky offense. But when I first started off, I was definitely more of a um, a defensive player, and I always wanted to switch into most relevant things. And as I've kind of evolved. Uh, playing Pokemon, I've just realized sometimes it's better to just sack them on and go into another threat, so I feel like I'm definitely more of a, an offensive player now, much more than I used to be. Alright, Keo, go for it. Well, I've experimented with a lot of different play styles, and I feel like I've found the most success with uh, balance, uh, funny enough, since it's very uh, unviable, but I would say um, more offense or bulky offense is what I uh, prefer, just due to the fact that I like making aggressive double switches, to go ahead and uh, bring momentum on my side, but I also like having things to pivot with because I feel like those create easier double switches, um, if that makes any sense at all. What yeah. I'm saying is, like, if I have a Ferrothorn in on your uh, water type, I can predict you to bring in your fighting type and go straight to my flying type or something like that. <laughs> I, li- I, I, li- I like being able to have uh, the ability to double switch, and I feel like uh, offense and bulky offense really give you the best opportunities to do that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I would say my favorite play style is Chicken Pass. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, I'm, I'm more of a Baton Pass player myself. Don't shoot me. <laughs> no, no, no. But um, in all in all honesty, um, I have to agree with Keo. Um, balance is probably my favorite play style. Uh, the reason is because I feel like balance allows you to win in a lot of different ways. Um, if you're playing stall with a balanced team, then your wall breakers allow you to break through that team and possibly win. If you're playing hyper offense, then your more defensively oriented Pokemon can kind of help you, um, you know, stave off their attacks and kind of regain momentum. Nice lingo. And uh, <laughs> I just kind of, I kind of feel like uh, it's nice having so many different ways to win. Um, but unfortunately, if you're playing balance and OU this generation, you have zero ways to win. So. <laughs> yeah, balance and OU is pretty much That's dead. So true. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, lower tiers like NU before Combuskin. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Combuskin's kind of being cancerous and are you now too. I apologize for that. <laughs> I remember, no, you're not. I, it's out of <laughs> I remember oh, early <laughs> Joey's uh Joey's upload for Road to Top Ten R U. <laughs> Last guy in his video has as my team and I'm like ah, yes. And he played terribly with it. Yeah. The can the cancer spreading. Sorry, now. sorry viewer who that probably was. Sorry viewer. <laughs> I mean I'll be honest, I didn't even watch the video. I got it linked to me over Twitter and I kinda looked at it and I'm like, Yeah, that is my team, that's kinda funny. I didn't watch it though. All right, so let's go anyway. over the next question. Uh, the question is, uh, how do you feel about Slurpuff and NU? Okay. It's a great mon. No other way to put it. I mean, it's great. Calm Mind is a great set. You can run physically defensive with Chesto Rest. Uh, Belly Drum, I mean, it's versatile. It fulfills a lot of different roles on a lot of different teams. Yeah. Great switch into fighting types. Fairy typing is a godsend in that tier where every fairy type was defensive as all hell. There were no offensive fairy types, so that's really mm -hmm. nice. The thing about Slurpuff is it's just so, like you akin to, it's so damn versatile. I mean, I've... You don't fuck with the tongue. You don't. <laughs> I've I've been running um, Calm Mind ever since it dropped to NU because I realized it was most likely the better of the two sets. Um, and by two sets, I mean like ten. Uh, <laughs> I, I, there's Calm Mind 3 attack. There's Calm Mind 3 Calm attack. Mind yeah, exactly. Calm Mind 1 attack with Cotton Guard, Belly Drum... <laughs> um, you, I've I've run everything from Calm Mind three attacks with Psychic and Flamethrower, or no, sorry, Psy Psychic and Psychic and Surf, Psychic surf. and Surf, yeah, to two attacks with uh, Draining Kiss, Flamethrower, to one attack with just Draining Kiss and Aromatherapy. Um, I mean, I've run physically defensive. I've run just recently for the first time, as ironic as that is, uh, Belly Drum offensive, and I have to say, it's just so good. I mean, I don't think it borderlines on the broken side of it. It's just a really good mon. It's, it's definitely a top mon, just because of how many roles it can fill and how well it does in all of them. It's what and you needed. It needed a Wish Passic Fairy. It needed a, an offensive win condition that isn't Gator. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> offensive Calm Mind Pokemon was nice, so you don't have to rely on Crotomb. It just fulfills so many things, and it's a really nice addition. Yeah, I I'd think... just like to say something to the people who are complaining about Slurpuff saying it's broken. If it sets up don't stay in with the thing it's setting up on. Jesus Christ, that's why you lose. Okay, that's enough. Don't use choice fighting yeah. mons when it's still around. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> like, um, <laughs> I, I definitely have to agree with Kia's point. Um, but the thing is, is uh, I feel like, like Richard said, it's a really healthy part of the metagame. It adds a lot to the tier. And um, basically, I don't think it's broken because... Uh, basically, the mindset I've had against playing against it is always assume it's Belly Drum. Uh, because if it is Belly Drum and it gets a free Belly Drum, then it's you know, unless lost. you have unless you have like a Probo Pass, you're gonna lose. You know. You've lost. Um, so you know, as soon as they go in their Slurpuff, like let's go straight into your Belly Drum Slurpuff, you know, check or counter, you know. And if they go for Calm Minds, then you can kind of play around that more easily than an instant uh, plus the, six. The, than an instant mm -hmm. plus six. Yeah. Uh, so you just you just have to prepare for it in team building, you know, like any any other threat, um, and just don't let it set up. Yeah, I, I'd say it's about as centralizing as Gator or Vile Plume. It's not definitely not broken. It's just really good. Yeah. yeah. Yep. All right. The next question is, how do I convince my brother that NU isn't a worthless tier? Uh, I'm gonna answer this one first. I would say wait until combustion is yep. gone and then try to make that argument. <laughs> you stole my answer. <laughs> I have nothing else to add. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Did you have anything to add, Kia? <laughs> I mean, it's got uh, all the Gen 2 starters. That's pretty swag. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, you remember Gen 2? Oh, here's your tier. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. All right, the next question is... Uh... Oh, gosh. The next question is, what are your favorite Pokemon? <sighs> okay. Um, Back when it was all hipster to do this, probably... Was it a year ago that you guys put out, and by you guys I don't mean Gumi, I mean like Keo, Leo, uh, Land, you put out oh, the top, top 10 it's... Pokemon videos? Had to be a year ago, yeah. Yeah, I made a list uh, sitting in biology class, and I was going to do it, I just never actually got around to it. Um, you died at you, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it was always a toss-up between Glaceon and Keldeo. Um, mm. I mean, they're just so awesome. <laughs> I, I guess I have a thing about quadrupedal uh, mammals. Quadrupedal sure. mammals, true. Yeah. Sorry. Alright, All right, Keo, go for it. Uh, my favorite Pokemon uh, for the longest time has been Absol. Uh, I've seen... I mean, I remember playing through Mystery Dungeon Red and Blue Rex Rescue Team. Yes! And there's a scene where you're just, it, you're just in this <laughs> silly mouth, so right? Good. It's in my desk right now! <laughs> I know. It. You're just being led through these snowy mountains by an Absol. And the thing is just so majestic. And once that thing joined your team, like, it was just over. Like, I, I used Absol the rest of the game. It was amazing. Uh, yeah. But I also have another favorite Pokemon in Growlithe. Growlithe is so cute. Um, I was kind of jealous because every pretty, pretty much every Pokemon game I ever owned, I owned... Uh, blue version and uh, green version or uh, leaf green version and uh, you couldn't catch Growlithe in those so I always wanted it because I was one of the Arcanine and Growlithe's a cool Pokemon in general so I mean uh, to be honest lesser but... defensive intimidator uh, Growlithe is very viable in you alright who are you <laughs> I keep spamming that in the chat I don't know who that is but stop <laughs> I love Roserade yeah, I love Roserade I love Roserade I can switch it on Stuff you and go for a strong Giga Drainer Sludge Bomb <laughs> Oh, and it can even heal itself with simplest <laughs> natural cure. <laughs> no. Okay. Right. But, uh, my favorite Pokemon is Shinx. Um, I just really like Shinx's design. I don't know why. Just the first time I saw Shinx on like Route 202 or whatever it is in uh, DPP, I was like, yeah. man, that Pokemon is really, really cool. And I mean, yeah, Luxio and Luxray kind of follow the same design, and those are cool too. But Shinx is just like the perfect combination of cute and badass. Like, I don't know. But should it be a dark type? No. Well, <laughs> Consensus is done. <laughs> okay. oh, oh, gosh. All right, I'm not even asking this question. <laughs> Hello? All right, I need to do a quick Google, but, um, okay, so here's my question. Do you know what that word means? <laughs> so here's my question. I'm not going to ask any extreme ones since this is the first episode. After dating for a year, your partner reveals to you that she is impotent. Break it or make it? Do you know what that means? Could you pronounce it correctly? No. <laughs> <laughs> it means that you can't have babies, friends. Just click the old research button real quick. <laughs> <laughs> the research button. <laughs> he literally highlighted it in the Google Doc and researched it. Do you want me to send, do you want me to send oh, let me um, Google that for you, Link? Um, all right, Stephen. I think you should. Yeah, answer first. come on. Stop delaying. Hello. <laughs> you didn't even answer the question, so uh, or ask right. the question. I think you, you're the first answer. Yeah, here. Richard needs research time. We'll go. Okay. All right. Um, it depends on how much I like her. <laughs> Fair enough answer. No. I would say the same, but uh, I really want kids, so I don't know. It'd be uh, more difficult for the relationship to go on. I would say. True. True. All right, Richard. Your research time's over. Um, you're on the spot. I mean, what do you got? I would say yeah. Hot seat. I would say. <laughs> Hello. Uh, I would say yes I because I mean, if I've already gotten to the point with her where we're making babies, um, I'm sure we can work around it. We love each other. Probably just adopt some kid. It could be fun. Ah, true, true, Richard. With the options, all right. Okay. You can also Which adopt just a good guy, ladies. Yeah. Ladies, if you want a good man, go up to Canada, Toronto area, I believe. <laughs> near Toronto. Oh, <laughs> that's literally what it says on your Smogon profile. Is near Toronto. Yeah. He's like. Uh, he's like 13 hours away from my hometown, so look that's for the guy in the Blue Jays total. cap. That's who you want. All right, uh, last question. All right, uh, this question asks: Do you think they should allow weather in lower tiers? And you, comma, are you close? We don't have a choice thanks to Choco because it's only five turns. <laughs> okay, so um, the thing about this is weather wouldn't only be five turns in the lower tiers because of damp rock and heat rock, obviously, but. Um, they do already allow weather. They allow sand and hail because they don't boost any moves by 1.5, which I think is what breaks rain and sun. 
I think you guys would agree with me on that. But, yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, is other that... Other than the fact that water types all get Swift Swim. But... Yeah, I mean, yeah. Drizzle Swift Swim. But... There's very few boosting abilities for... Um, the thing that Same. PO has done, I know, in their lower tiers is uh, they didn't ban Drizzle, but they've banned the Damp and Heat Rock because uh, with only five turns upon switching and four once you switch out to your threat, it's a lot more manageable than seven. And I kind of, I don't agree oh, with it, but I kind of like what they did. All I'd like I mean. to say is it would have been nice to have the opportunity, Coco Loco. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Basically, you you cancel strikes again. They're literally Hitler. It would have been yeah. nice to know. Yeah. Um, the thing is, is that weather is actually kind of defining the metagame right now. Well, other than chicken pass, but yeah, you know, weather is all oh, over yeah, the you place. See pretty much all the top ladder players experimenting with uh, Rain. sun and sand. I'd say and I know I've run ton of sun teams and I, I guess rain's being used a lot too. Yeah. Steven recently made a rain team. Yeah, I mean rain is rain is good. Um but sun is better in this tier because uh because Darumaka. No. Because oh, oh, okay. because nothing wants to switch in on a solar beam. Like yeah. I mean solar the only things I mean the only that. things that can switch in on solar beam is like Vile well, or auto just, grass it's types in general. Get wrecked by weather ball. Yeah, exactly. Just I was gonna say grass types in general oh, switch in, but weather ball is carried by both victory bell. I mean, I, I know vile plume gets HP fire. <laughs> oh, vile plume gets HP fire. Well done. Richard. Yeah. <laughs> no, vile plume unfortunately can't learn HP fire. <laughs> but yeah, like, uh, <laughs> it's, it's not allowed. Banned. If you try and do it, in it's, the been, team banned team. The it's been banned by the UU. It's been banned by UU. Council, yeah. <laughs> just, just like skulls. <laughs> But yeah, like, um, weather is everywhere. I mean, the other day I, I made a rain team with a Shedinja with no hazard support and got to the finals of a, a new tournament. So <laughs> Room tour. Doesn't matter. Room tour, yeah. Yeah, that means, it means absolutely nothing. But the fact that I actually won <laughs> games <laughs> just shows that the weather is, is good and the uh, sun is just easily the best weather in any year right now. Um, yeah. It's just... It's so hard to switch in. I mean, in. it's the best weather unless you play rain. Yeah, Basically. I mean, it's just, it's so hard to switch in, you know. Well, wasn't that true in Gen 5 as well? It's true. Basically, every time it's happened, I mean... Sun was the best weather unless you faced rain, but because rain was up at, like, 30%, it wasn't the best weather. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just... It's really, really good, and... I don't know. I think it'd be interesting if they tested it, but, yeah... I mean, UU technically they are testing it. They're going to test it in UU, but I know they've all been joking that it's not even worth a test because it's just going to be banned. So I would like to see the stones tested and kind of follow akin to PO just because it's an interesting way, uh, an interesting, like, way to go about it. But who knows? But you can't always trust PO because they chose to keep Baton Pass. They also chose Deoxys D and well, RE. they have really shitty OU tier leaders that literally don't even play the game half the time. <laughs> I mean, why is Professor Oak on the council? The world may never know. The world may never know. <laughs> any, any of you Smogonites won't get the PO players might. True. True. But, uh, yeah. And with that, I, I guess we're going to wrap up today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, definitely leave uh, leave comments down below, questions for next time. Um, Thought-provoking, yeah. as always. And uh, I guess we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye! Bye! Bye. Uh, Peace.